Welcome to this free CCNA Packet Tracer Practice Lab. You can download the lab file from the link in the description. If you like these labs, please consider supporting me via my Patreon or the cryptocurrency options in the description. This lab, the 20th of these free labs I've created for YouTube, will serve as a review of several of the topics we've covered in the previous 19. I plan to do these at various points in this series. Although you could just go back and redo previous labs to serve as review, my regular configuration labs tend to focus on just one technology at a time, such as VLANs or port security. I think that labs like this one, involving multiple technologies, are also beneficial. In this lab, we will configure host names, the enable secret, VLANs, trunks, port security, and inter-VLAN routing with router on a stick. Try to complete the lab yourself first, then continue watching this video if you have trouble or watch it after to check your solution. Step one is to configure host names for each of the networking devices, R1, switch one, and switch two. This is done with a single command, host name. Let's go on R1 first. Enable, conf t, host name R1. Next, switch one. Enable, conf t, host name switch one. Finally, switch two. Enable, conf t, host name switch two. That's it for step one. Step two is to configure an enable secret of CCNA for each networking device. This is another fairly simple step. Remember, the enable secret is an encrypted password that protects privileged exec mode of the router, requiring a password to use the enable command. We could also configure an enable password and then encrypt it with the service password encryption command. However, the encryption of the enable secret is more secure so you'll always want to use that instead. Let's do switch to first, since we're here. Enable secret CCNA. Remember, passwords are case sensitive, so make sure CCNA is all capitals. Now let's use the same command on switch one. Enable secret CCNA. And finally, R1. Enable secret CCNA. That's all for step two. Step three is to configure the switch ports to which PCs are connected as access ports in specific VLANs. PC1 and PC3 in VLAN 13, and PC2 and PC4 in VLAN 24. Let's start on switch one. PC1 is connected to F02, so interface F02. Switch port mode access. Now that we've explicitly configured it as an access port, let's put it in VLAN 13. Switch port access VLAN 13. Now let's configure F03, which PC2 is connected to, to be in VLAN 24. Interface F03. Switch port mode access, switch port access VLAN 24. That's it for switch one. Next, let's hop on switch two. Interface F02. Switch port mode access. PC3 is connected to this interface, so switch port access VLAN 13. Now F03, which PC4 is connected to. Interface F03. Switch port mode access. Switch port access VLAN 24. That's all for step three. Step four is to configure a trunk between switch one and switch two. Remember, switch ports by default function as access ports in VLAN one. PCs one, two, three, and four are in VLAN 13 and 24. So even PCs in the same VLAN won't be able to communicate with each other across these two switches. Currently, the two switches will only carry traffic in VLAN one between them. Let's configure this trunk to change that. Now, which interfaces do they use to connect to each other? Let's use one CDP command to find out. On switch two first, since we're already here. Do show CDP neighbors. As it shows here, 
Switch 2 is connected to Switch 1 using the F01 interface. It also shows that Switch 2 is connected to Switch 1's F01 interface here, so we don't need to use this command on Switch 1. Let's configure the trunk now. Interface F01. Switch port mode trunk. That's it. On this switch model, we don't have to configure the encapsulation type of dot one q. If we did, we would use the command switch port trunk encapsulation dot one q. Now let's go to switch one to do the same. Interface F01. Switch port mode trunk. Let's use a show command to confirm. Do show interface trunk. As you can see, F01 is indeed trunking. Now, PC1 should be able to ping PC3, but not PC2 and PC4. Likewise, PC2 should be able to ping PC4, but not PC1 and PC3. Let's try on PC1 first. Ping 10.0.1.12. The ping to PC2 doesn't work. Now to PC3. Ping 10.0.0.13. It works. Let's confirm on PC2. Ping 10.0.0.11. The ping to PC1 doesn't work. Now let's ping PC4, which should work. Ping 10.0.1.14. It works. Our trunk has been successfully configured. Now, step 5 is to configure port security on the switch ports connected to PCs. We need to enable sticky MAC address learning and change the default violation action of shutdown to restrict. Let's go on switch 1. We'll be using the same commands for each interface, so let's be more efficient by configuring an interface range instead of doing each one separately. Interface range F02 to 3. Now we're in interface range configuration mode. Both interfaces are already explicitly configured as access ports, so we don't have to do that this time. Switch port, port security. Now port security is enabled. Let's configure sticky MAC address learning. Switch port, port security, MAC address sticky. Finally, let's change the violation action to restrict, which blocks offending traffic, but does not shut down the port. That is done with this command. Switch port, port security, violation, restrict. Now let's do the same on switch two. Again, I'll configure an interface range. Interface range F02 to three. Switch port, port security. Switch port, port security, MAC address, sticky. Switch port, port security, violation, restrict. There we go. Step five is now complete. Step six is to configure inter VLAN routing with the router on a stick method. Router on a stick involves configuring sub interfaces on a router, one for each VLAN required. We'll do that on R1's G00 interface, which is connected to switch one's G01 interface. We also must configure switch one's G01 interface as a trunk. So let's do that first. Interface G01. Switch port mode trunk. Okay, that's all we need to do on switch one. Let's go to R1 now. Interface G00. Now, router interfaces are shut down by default, as you may have noticed from the red port lights on the link between R1 and switch one. So first, I'll type no shutdown to enable it. You could also do this at the end of the configuration. Now let's create the sub interface for VLAN 13. Interface G00.13. Note that the sub interface name doesn't actually have to match the VLAN number, but it's good practice to do so to avoid confusion. Now, first we have to set the encapsulation and VLAN. Encapsulation.1Q13. Okay, now let's set the IP address. According to our instructions and the default gateway addresses I've pre-configured on the PCs in this lab, let's set it to 
IP address 10.0.0.1.255.255.255.0. Okay, that's it. Now let's configure the sub-interface for VLAN 24. Interface G00.24. Encapsulation.1Q 24. IP address 10.0.1.1. 255.255.255.0. Our inter-VLAN routing is now complete. Finally, let's ping between PCs to make sure everything works. We should now have full connectivity between all PCs. To check, I'll ping from PC1 and then from PC2. On PC1, let's ping PC2 first. Ping 10.0.1.12. It works. Next, PC3. Ping 10.0.0.13. It works. Finally, PC4. Ping 10.0.1.14. It works as well. Now, let's do the same on PC2. First, I'll ping PC1, ping 10.0.0.11, it works, PC3, ping 10.0.0.13, it works too. Finally, I'll ping PC4, ping 10.0.1.14. It works as well. We have full connectivity between all computers. That's all for this lab. Thank you for watching. I hope this lab and video have been helpful for you. Please subscribe for future labs like this, which will be released weekly. If you have requests for any specific labs, let me know in the comment section. If you want to support my channel, please consider contributing to my Patreon, patreon.com slash Jeremy's IT Lab. I accept Bitcoin and Ethereum donations via the addresses in the description. I am also a Brave Verified Publisher and accept BAT or Basic Attention Token donations in the Brave browser.